Good evening and welcome to Ascension. Today we celebrate the fifth Sunday in Ordinary Time and all the music can be found in the bulletin. Our gathering song is Rain Down. Please rise.
Let us pray. O God, Almighty Father, for the sake of the good works they have done through their long life together, look kindly on this husband and wife, John and Dottie, with the child they have brought to life and faith, and as you sealed the beginnings of their love by a wonderful sacrament, so bless their fruitful old age. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let's be seated and listen to the word of our Lord. A reading from the book of Job. Job spoke, saying, Is not man's life on earth a drudgery? Are not his days those of hirelings? He is a slave who longs for the shade, a hireling who waits for his wages. So I have been assigned months of misery, and troubled nights have been allotted to me. If in bed I say, When shall I arise? Then the night drags on. I'm filled with restlessness until the dawn. My days are swifter than a weaver's shuttle. They come to an end without hope. Remember that my life is like the wind. I shall not see happiness again. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, if I preach the gospel, this is no reason for me to boast. For an obligation has been imposed on me, and woe to me if I do not preach it. If I do so willingly, I have a recompense, but if unwillingly, then I have been entrusted with a stewardship. What then is my recompense? That when I preach, I offer the gospel free of charge, so as not to make full use of my right to the gospel. Although I am free in regard to all, I have made myself a slave to all, so as to win over as many as possible, to the weak I become weak, to win over the weak. I have become all things to all, to save at least some. All this I do for the sake of the gospel, so that I too may have a share in it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Leaving the synagogue, Jesus entered the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. Simon's mother-in-law lay sick with a fever. They, they immediately told him about her. He approached, grasped her hand, and helped her up. Then the fever left her and she waited on them. When it was evening, after sunset, they brought to him all who were ill or possessed by demons. The whole town was gathered at the door. He cured many who were sick with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, not permitting them to speak because they knew him. Rising very early before dawn, he left and went off to a deserted place where he prayed. Simon and those who were with him pursued him, and on finding him said, Everyone is looking for you. He told them, Let us go on to the nearby villages, that I may preach there also. For this purpose have I come. So we went into their synagogues, preaching and driving out demons throughout the whole of Galilee. The Gospel of the Lord. A bit during the gospel because the, the linen goes, There's Father Adam. <laughs> it's always entertaining. God bless him. <laughs> a couple weeks ago, Deacon John came to me and said, Do you mind if we switch preaching weekends coming up? And not having even looked at the readings, I was like, Sure. I mean, I want to be flexible. And yeah, I, I don't blame you for not necessarily wanting to preach on your 50th anniversary, but rather to sit with your wife. And uh, so I did, we switched. He preached last weekend, I preached this weekend. I didn't yet look at the readings or have a clear understanding of what those readings were, but once I realized that he would have been preaching on the book of Job and Peter's mother-in-law, 
I can see why a married man would probably want to avoid that on his uh, wedding anniversary. These readings are intense, especially Job, my Lord. It's not easy to make our way through the book of Job. It's so uh, intense uh, with the emotion, the despair, especially that we hear today from Job. It's, it's so much. He is unloading his burdens that he has encountered upon the Lord. And we will hear in the, the following chapters that God listens to him. God desires to walk that journey with him. And yet, it's still a difficult book to work our way through. I was reading a article the other day. It was specifically entitled, I Desire to Burden My Loved Ones. I Desire to Burden My Loved Ones. I thought, that's interesting. I wonder what that has to say. And what this author was describing was a moment in which he was at a, uh, an advanced directives workshop. And in that, a lot of the individuals there were speaking about how they did not desire to burden their loved ones. Now, don't get me wrong. It's all about balance. It really is. I mean, if one uh, is uh, looking forward to burdening their loved ones, well, that might be problematic as well. But he, having reflected on it, thought about how being a burden on someone you love is part of love. Indeed, at every wedding we celebrate, there is the recognition on some level that there's difficulty that's awaiting that couple in their lives. That there is pain and suffering, as well as joy and hope and goodness, that one of them will more than likely leave before the other. And yet our world has convinced us that we don't want to burden our loved ones that we actually go out of our way sometimes. The increase of the, the, the a talk around euthanasia and all of that in our lives earlier so that we don't burden our loved ones. There's a lot of pain, a lot of difficulty in that. And yet there's an obligation as well. St. Paul specifically talks about his obligation, his obligation to preach the gospel, that he is obliged out of love to preach God's word. And married couples and all of us are obliged to love those who we are in union with, especially our families. There is both sides of that, the love and the burden. Peter's mother-in-law is appearing to be a burden, at least on some level, to that household. We don't know about Peter's wife. We don't know if, he, if she has already passed, if she's still alive. We don't know what happened to her. We do know that Peter, our first, first pope, was married, that he had a wife because he had a mother-in-law. And so within that, he is uh, caring for her. She is a burden on him, and yet he desires to introduce her to Jesus Christ. That he desires to bring him into that situation, not to get rid of the burden, not because he doesn't love her, but because he desires what is good. He has taken her on as a member of his family, and he is burdened by her. When we think of burdens, we often think of that which we want to let go of, that which we don't want. Children, too, are 
a burden on their parents, all that goes into raising children, it is part of the cycle of what we, how we live. That by being a burden, we teach one another to love. We teach one another to take on one another's burdens. Within that, we see how Jesus Christ has come to heal us, but also to walk with us in that suffering, to be with us in the midst of that. When it's uncertain how it is that we are called to uh, address the burdens in our lives, desiring not to be too great a burden on our loved ones, but wanting to share in that love as well. There is one who can and does carry all of it. There is one who can and does desire to hold all of that. That's the one that Job cries out to today, unleashing all of his burdens, all of his sorrow, all of his grief and anger, all of his uncertainty about the future. He unleashes that, he burdens God with that, and God doesn't tell him to be quiet. He rather takes that on for himself. To recognize that Job is not alone in all of this that he is experiencing. Let us in our lives look to married couples and to families as this inspiration as to how to share one another's burdens because as we share a burden we prove and show our love as well In our desire to lead lives of faith, let's proclaim our one faith together. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. I confess one baptism, for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We now turn to our Lord in heaven, presenting our needs and petitions to our Almighty God, who sustains the lowly and heals the brokenhearted. That the church, the seed of the kingdom inaugurated by Christ, may be nourished by his grace to grow in unity and holiness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That government and public health officials may be granted wisdom and strength in their efforts to manage the pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
that the good news of God's kingdom may give hope to all those in misery and despair. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our Ascension youth, who are preparing to receive the Sacrament of Confirmation this week, may be blessed by the Spirit with love, joy, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Dutch Kisner and for Paul Griffith, who have entered into their eternal rest in the heavenly kingdom. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord. For the 50th anniversary of John and Dottie Lewis, for whom this Mass is being celebrated. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the prayers in our Book of Intentions, and for those which we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord our God, we cry upon, cry to you time and again, making known our needs and intentions, looking upon your response in our lives. Hear these prayers and answer them according to your holy will. For we ask this through Christ our Lord. Oh 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O God, to receive these offerings presented in thanksgiving for your servants, John and Dottie, who have lived as one in true fidelity these many years, and to ask of your bounty all the blessings of unity and peace through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For in him you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give the sign of Christ's loving gift of grace so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints, we praise you and without end, we Acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and to make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and to drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of the faith.
Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering unto you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity the pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Joseph, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Sing graciously to the of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom, there we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. John and Dottie, would you please come forward for your blessing? Lord God and Creator, we bless and praise your name. In the beginning you made man and woman, so that they might enter a communion of life and love. You likewise blessed the union of John and Dottie, so that they might reflect the union of Christ with his church. Look with kindness on them today, amid the joys and struggles of their life. You have preserved the union between them, Renew their marriage covenant, increase your love in them, and strengthen their bond of peace, so that, surrounded by their child, they may always of your blessing. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Speaking of your child, he's right behind you.
Let us now offer one another some sign of peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter into my room. room. May you only say, say the word, word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having tasted the delights of your table, we entreat you, O Lord, to keep this merry couple, John and Dottie, safe and holy in the years ahead, until you welcome them both in the fullness of their days to your heavenly banquet. Through Christ our Lord. Thursday, as was mentioned in our petitions, our young people will be confirmed, and the Archbishop will be here, and it will be, uh, it will be a grand celebration. And so pray for those to be confirmed. And then on Friday, we have Ascend, our Eucharistic Adoration, 7 to 8, here in church with confession available as well. And to celebrate this wonderful couple, they will head back to the back in the cafeteria and we can form a receiving line and Alice has baked cookies. You can have some cookies as you're on your way out. And so um, let's all be able to celebrate this wonderful couple that means so much to us. The Lord be with you. May almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord with your life.